I love you because you are rich and famous. Thank you. I wish I would have been listening a couple years ago when I had opportunities that I passed up. Young lady that you were just talking to. Who are you, who are you talking about? Naivety. Naivety? There's no way in hell I can ever hire a woman. I own a bunch of liquor stores. Who the hell is going to believe a woman when they ask about a good beer? I think that communication and understanding. Uh, here's what I understand about you. You you can't shut up. Oh my. I don't. That is so not true. You've been talking so much more than me. Life is 101 ought to be a required course for every child entering elementary school. And then they should give it to them again in junior high. And they should give them a refresher course in high school. And if they ever make it to college, which I'm afraid most of your listeners don't, they should teach an advanced course. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTP um, that. Uh email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom like this one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I think a lot of guys have become idiots due to people like you. How could I make someone an idiot? I can't reduce somebody's IQ. I want to say something. I want to say something. <laughs> Uh, the thing that I have to say about what she's saying right now is the reason why men are idiots are because girls are influencing guys to act like idiots. It's the girls that are promoting guys' stupid behavior, and it's the girls trying to control us. And shut up, dude. You just no. put my phone out of my hand. I, I agree with what you're saying, and they need to know their place. And if they try to act like men, they should at least live up to what they're trying to be. I bet they... Uh, Hello? A lot, right? I, I, want, I need to so recommend something to you. Them. Kick them out I need to recommend no, but I, day, I've got but you know what you know you're missing something very important here. I am trying to recommend something to you. Is this what it's like being married to you? No wonder your husband can't take it anymore. He's going to church praying that you'll be struck by lightning. I think. Hang on a second, uh, Ginger. What did you want to say to Daniel? Daniel. So what happens if you end up killing somebody on the freeway after hitting him? Because I'm not going to kill anybody. I consider yeah. myself to be a great drunk driver. You know, I want to have a friend over. Why you got to have? Why you got to trip over that? Or if I'm working on this, or I'm working on that, it's like you don't love me anymore. Why well, don't you spend time with me? And I just want to say, Shh, shut up. Where can I find the? Krugers, lonely Krugers for the holidays, just bang. Most of them work, I think, over at Coast and uh, My FM. Massagers is, a, is a, a heterosexual male who uses women for sex only. Well, that is actually not what a misogynist is, but uh, that's okay. Go ahead. That's my comment. That's not what a misogynist is. Okay, explain it. You, no, no, you know what? Why don't you take out a dictionary, which you just claim to have done? Why don't you take out a dictionary for real this time and look the word up yourself? All right, Tom, I will. My God. Oh, my God. And while you're at it, look at the word stupid, and you'll see your photograph right there. Listen next to the word. I've been drinking and driving a long time. I have yet to be pulled over, wrecked, or hurt anybody. And I'm very good at what I do, woman. So sit there like a woman and sit back, shut your mouth, and enjoy the ride. You're on a pay phone because yes. you're poor. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, you're a helper. What, are you psychic now? Should I call Jack, you next time you know, I need to what's, know what's, what's, what's next? Are you going to go to the post office and buy a postcard so you can send a letter to somebody? Tom, please shut the hell up. From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8255. Six, six. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all, toll free at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This Sunday, the cast and crew of the Tom Likas Show is getting together. The Tom Likas Mansion South. 
<laughs> we have to differentiate now. For uh, our Christmas dinner, since on Christmas Day we'll all be scattering different directions, and uh, we are uh, we're making a turducken <laughs> on Sunday. Where did this idea come from, Gary, to have a turducken on? Well, for our Christmas uh, meal, uh, you know, I'm I'm busting my brain trying to think of where I originally got the whole turducken idea, but uh, it became an obsession for me. And um, I think I must have seen it. As you know, because I can't stop talking about it, I've become addicted to the Food Network, and I, I constantly just sit there uh, higher than hell and uh, vapidly stare at a television screen while people cook things. And every <laughs> once in a while, it actually you know sinks into my brain. And so I, somebody was cooking a turducken. I thought it was the most fascinating thing I'd ever seen. Were you chemically altered at the time you were watching this? Always. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, it, it, this particular story said that there's this place, A Bears, which is like the home of Traduck, and apparently it was, it, according to many, invented at this place. It's what originates from there. I went online. I ordered one. It was shipped here in two days in dry ice. It's now uh, defrosting in my refrigerator. Tell everybody what a turducken is. It's not to be confused with a tofurkey, the exact opposite of a turducken. You ever it, hear of a tofurkey? A tofurkey is um, uh, made with tof- tofu, correct? Yeah, it, it yes. looks like a turkey. Yeah. It, it feels like a turkey when you cut into it, and I guess they no, put yeah. some herbs on it or something to make it resemble turkey. This is the exact opposite of that. This has got to be the most, um, I would imagine, the most manly thing that you could sit down and eat at a table because what you're eating. No, I think there's something more manly than that. <laughs> That's true. It's got a little hair That's on it. true. <laughs> By the way, we were having bearded clam as a side dish. Well, I thought that was the stuffing. Sorry. So with special sauce. <laughs> what? What is a turducken? Turducken is um, a duck inside a chicken inside a turkey, and it's all deboned. So the, and um, each. Uh, meat is um, then packed with a stuffing of some kind. When they debone a drumstick, does it just like hang flaccid there? I think there? there's probably some flappy stuff going on. I'm really? not sure. Do they tie yeah. it up like a like a roast beef? Well, or the something? whole thing is tied and like stitched together like a Frankenstein <laughs> thing. It's like like those leg of lambs you get at the legs of lamb you get at like Trader Joe's, right? Uh, the boneless leg of lamb. And it's got all this netting around it. It looks like they caught it like a dolphin or something. It really, by the way, this thing is vacuum packed. It really looks like a thing of beauty. It's, it's, uh, I can't Does wait. it look absolutely Ab- disgusting? I can't wait till, I can't wait till this happens. And we were still kind of on the fence about whether we should include pot butter in any of the recipes. Because we <laughs> kind of feel that it might go downhill very fast. If so, so they debone a duck. They debone a duck. And they, they stuff it inside a, a deboned, deboned chicken. chicken. Correct. Then they, they they stuff that inside a deboned turkey. Correct. And am I to understand that I was wondering if I had to make stuffing with this thing, but no. Inside the layers of bird, uh, like surrounding each bird is like this cornbread or pork like sausage, stuffing. Like cornbread, a sausage, cornbread, yeah, stuffing. So, But yeah. the thing is, rather than just sticking it in one large cavity like you do in a turkey, right. it like surrounds each bird as you go through. So I guess you slice this thing, this Frankenstein of meat, you slice yeah. it, and you get a slice that has turkey, chicken, duck, and stuffing all on one slice. Right. <laughs> right. Wow. That does, it, 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 does now, it, this has been a hell of an effort too, by the way. I mean, you know, the, the, it's like a fifteen-pound, you know, thing ball of meat that I've had shipped from somewhere in Louisiana. Yes. Uh, which is, so the thing is like sixty-five bucks. It costs like a hundred bucks to ship it in two days, um, and now it, it's it's four days to defrost in in the refrigerator, and then we, uh, as a, as a show, will collectively. I guess cook this thing at your place. Yes, on Sunday um, for I five the, hours. I saw the website for A Bears, by the way, yes. and I saw the turducken. Yeah. Now, you know, I as you know, every year I cook my thirty-pound turkey at home, and I serve about twenty people with this thirty-pound turkey. 
This thing, which weighs 15 or 16 pounds, it says on the website, serves 22 people. That's correct. How many are we having over? Four. Four. There'll be four of us. We haven't even figured out if we'll do side dishes or anything. We just oh, know there's going to be weed and turducken. And, and fish oil. I'm taking fish oil all weekend <laughs> to ramp up for this. I'm going to be taking lots of fish oil capsules in advance. That has got to be the cholesterol king right there. It looks fantastic. Like, you know, when you when you take a slice out of the thing, it just looks great. You I know saw the, the pictures yeah. on the website. It looks amazing. I mean, did, did my three favorite birds, all in one. I'm really looking forward to this. Love it. And it's, it's a little like his family Christmas. <laughs> I, I am blown away. And then as if there's not enough cholesterol, a little pork stuffing in there. I, <laughs> This is insane. Now, haven't we heard that uh, John Madden is a fan of these things? Madden apparently, yes, is a big fan of turducken, and he brings it up on occasion. And um, I, you know, it, look at John Madden and, and look at look we're at all going to look like John Madden right. when it's over. Exactly. Holy cow! Well, I guess that wouldn't be the appropriate term, <laughs> right? Oh wow! So yeah, it's it. Uh, you know, it's good. Why didn't they just stuff a honey baked ham in there too? <laughs> It will be a full day affair. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All and right. We got Lakers Clippers on Sunday. Lakers Clippers on the big football. screen. That's right. Yeah. Football's coming down to the wire here. This will spiral downhill very quickly. Yes. I'm just wondering what kind of condition we'll, in, we'll be in when this thing finally comes out of the oven. Doesn't matter, Doesn't matter says Art. <laughs> And there are, of course, uh, carving directions and uh, gravy yes. directions online that uh, we will try to follow in whatever state we're I wonder what kind of gravy in. you get out of this thing. You know, is somebody will just start trying to breed these, you know. I mean, why bother going to all this trouble of stuffing one inside of another? I bet there's somebody right now working on crossbreeding all these breeds. Apparently, this A Bears does like you know thousands of them a year, and I never even heard of it. But this wow. is this is a very popular thing. I can't wait. A bird inside a bird inside a bird. <laughs> I'm not going to eat this weekend until that thing comes out of the oven, or until we start. <laughs> I'm going to bake some bread <laughs> because that's all I can think to do at this point. Now we were going to put the weed butter in the bread, and then. We thought better. I don't think we're we're going that way, because then we're just going to all glom on the bread, right? And then you know, an hour later, it's just going to be a mess. That's right. It is. Unless we did a like a you know a mellower version of the weed butter. Well, you could uh, do uh, brownies, I guess, for dessert. That could be dangerous too. <laughs> It's coming up at the Lycus Compound South Sunday night. We're all getting together for our little Christmas dinner. God only knows what's going to happen. If you hear the screams coming from the Hollywood Hills, you will know. All right, uh, it's wide open telephones here, 1-800-5800-TOM. Your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Lycus, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. There's plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even I, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm Over the hill slots. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Like It Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Anything goes on this Friday, 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Evan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Papa. Hello, Evan. How's it going? Doing okay. 
Cool, cool. What I want to talk to you about is uh, like this, uh, these debates that are going on and how they're like pretty much weekly. I was wondering if you like, I feel that they're making it look like reality show. Well, I, I certainly thought having the YouTube debate was kind of gimmicky. Very much so. Very much so. And uh, that guy who laughs in the background, what's his name? Art? Art, yes. <laughs> Tell him to hush up. <laughs> Everybody's got a different opinion about Art. Cool. That's what I thought. Anyways, take me out with... Um, What's that guy from uh, Texas who shot his wife? Oh, uh, Freddie Wilhite. Freddie Wilhite. I can never remember that. Freddie Wilhite style. Here you go. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? She's dead. I think she's dead. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Ashley on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ashley. Hi. Hi. I um I'm not too familiar with your show, but I just I had a couple questions because I heard you uh, a couple calls back. I guess lay out your ideology for some woman. Yes. And um, I was curious if you. I guess two questions. One is, um, do you recommend that all men behave this way and secondly how would you recommend a woman only men who want to get laid <laughs> only men that want to get laid yes okay well how should a woman behave if she wants to be like in a serious relationship or married how should she behave well uh, first of all i don't I, I don't advise people on that you what i don't advise the surest way to get married is to refuse to give up sex uh, to spend as much of a man's money as possible and to treat him like absolute crap. But, I mean, I don't want to treat somebody like that, and I well, don't want to be treated the way that... That's what a lot of guys say when I say treat a woman like crap and you'll get laid, but that's what works. But if I want to get married how, and I want to get respect, <laughs> how should I... Not Darling, I, 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 I have said on this program many times, I don't pretend to be an expert in marriage. I'm divorced four times. You don't want to ask me that. Uh, well, I just am wondering um, then, okay. I don't recommend marriage to men. Let's start with that. To any man. Any man. But what if they have different desires than you? I mean, I understand why you would ask. Well, if they do, I'll put it this way. If a man desires to give away more than half of everything he's ever earned, all right, go ahead. It's a good way to get rid of all that excess money and wealth you've been holding on to. <laughs> so the only way that somebody could want to get married, I, I, guess, I'm, I guess I'm confused. If you're a man, the, the best reason to get married is you've got a lot of wealth and you're looking to give it to someone. That's the best reason to get married. Well, because there's really no That's good the reason, reason. There's really no good mm -hmm. reason for a man to get married. So, if everybody acted the way you suggest, um, wouldn't human existence stop? No, people have children without being married. But I, I have heard you say that you think that's not a good idea. It's so not good for children. You think it's a good idea to have kids, darling. You don't. You don't listen to what I say. You see, that's part of the problem here. I've only heard you a couple times, but I did hear you. All right, well, I'm going to tell you, and if you'll listen now, I'm going to tell you specifically. Okay. There are benefits to children to get married, for, for adults to get married, and there are benefits to a woman to get married. There's no benefit to a man. But you should only, so you should get married after you have the kid then. No, I say uh, the only time a man gets married is if he wants to put the interests of other people ahead of his own, something I don't choose to do. Right, I, I understand what you, that you don't choose to do that. I'm but And there's no benefit to a man to do it. He, this is the ultimate in selflessness, getting married, because it's good for everybody but him. Well, if, what if they're in a healthy marriage, though? I mean, if you want to get laid, I personally enjoy having sex, and if I was to be married, I would be having but sex. But darling, if I'm not married often. to you, I can have sex with whoever I want. 
whenever yeah, I want. You can have sex with your wife whenever you want if you're in a healthy marriage. But if I'm not married, I can have sex with anyone I want to. It, that seems like more effort. I can have sex. But really, there isn't more effort because... The effort is setting up your bullpen, and after that, it's pretty much set. We use that word on the air, dear. Uh, oh. We're on the air. Oh, sorry. You, you have to explain that you're a jerk first, and and that takes more I energy mean, than I you don't have. Sex, believe right? me, I don't have to explain that I'm a jerk. I just am a jerk. Oh, I thought you said that you tell them first. That way, later. No, I just don't deny. Don't I I don't lie and say I'm not a jerk. I just act like a jerk. You can decide for yourself what I am. It's not my job to, to put the red flag out there for you. You you have to detect it or don't. I just thought that's how you were able to, then to have them leave because you. No, I, the point they is, first? they say to me, they say to me, you can't possibly be as bad as you say you are. Right, say you are. But you I don't say anything. Right? I just let them say that. Well, what are they? Why would somebody say that if you hadn't said anything? What do you, what do you because mean? Because they've heard my that? radio show, dear. Okay, then you have said it first, so that seems like... No, I'm on the radio. Yeah, no, already. dear, I'm just on the radio being a jerk. Do you understand? They hear me on the radio being a jerk. Then they're on a date with me. And then after a okay, couple of... That's, that's effort. Will you let me finish a sentence? Will you let me finish a sentence, please? Jesus, this is why I would never want to be married, because this is what it's like. What? The last time, the last relationship I was in was with someone like you. I didn't finish a sentence for three and a half years. <laughs> you know, the only sentence I finished all that time, it was one yeah, word. It was one word. Goodbye. <laughs> Period. Well, you didn't finish your sentence. What? Were you going to finish that thought? Yes, I will finish it. Women hear me on the radio being a jerk. Mm -hmm. Not announcing that I'm a jerk. I just act like one. Then they're on a date with me. Then they okay. say, I didn't finish. Shut up. <laughs> Putting you on hold until I finish this thought. Because you're not capable of shutting up. Then they're on a date with me. After they've had a couple of shots or a couple of margaritas, they say to me, Oh, you're not a teddy bear. You can't possibly be like that. You're such a nice guy. You can't possibly be like that. I know you're not like that. And I say nothing. I don't say yes. I don't say no. I don't say you're right. I don't say you're wrong. I just say nothing. Later on, after they've had sex with me and I don't agree to do any of the things they demand, then they start saying how, how unfair I am and how wrong I am. And I say, hey, you're the one who thought I was a nice guy. I am an a-hole. Do you understand? Well, I didn't hear you haven't been talking. Yeah, that's what I thought. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. She was talking probably continuously while I had her on. And, and and by the way, you, the one who never used to shut up, I know you're out there. You or one of your friends, and I'm telling you, see, I was trying to explain to you when we were together what it was like. It was like that. Okay? That's what it was like for three and a half years. It was just like that. I swear I never finished a sentence between 2001 and 2004. I didn't. <laughs> I just didn't finish the sentence. It was that it was that dynamic you just heard. Ask a question. I start to answer it. I get three words into the answer. Ask the next question. Why don't I want to be married? Why don't I want is somebody living with me? Why don't I want a relationship? You just heard Exhibit A, everybody. Hey, Tom, Joey Wax here. What's happening, man? I want to wish you and yours a happy holiday season. I miss you, pal. Hey, let me know where you want me to send this uh, Hollywood Post Office box renewal. I just got it in. Uh, thanks, bud. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's 
Just the job like it show at 1-800-5800. Tom, wide open telephones. Let's say hello here to Marie on the Tom Like It show. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm a little nervous, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm single, I have no children, and uh, I've been dating somebody for a couple months, and we were being very responsible and using you know, condoms, and I've been on birth control, and I got pregnant. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, despite all of that <laughs> effort that we put into being so careful, it still happened. Um, and I'm not really sure what to do about the whole situation. I'm almost 29, and I've got a good job, and I can afford to do this if I really want to. But uh, the father is very young, much, much younger than myself, and he's just not ready. Yeah. So what, what, what is your question? Well, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I just, I'm not sure kind of what to do about the whole situation. I, I don't know the guy well enough, but he, he really does seem to be a really genuinely good person. And he just seems like he's really, really not ready, and I know this. Um, he's young. He just started college. and Wait a minute. He just started college? How old is he? Well, he's 21. <laughs> you know, that's part of your problem right there. Yeah, he's much younger than myself. But um, I I don't know. It's weird. I've always kind of been... I'm not the type of female to live out my life with the intention that I have to get married and have to have children. I'm kind of like whatever cards life deals me, I'll play them, you know? And, well, why not uh, take more control of your life? Why do you have to let life deal you cards? Why can't you... Uh, be the croupier. <laughs> I don't know, because I guess uh, sometimes uh, life doesn't always work out the way you plan. <laughs> guess you what? Can uh, you you can... You have... Yeah, but the point is there's a lot of things you can control. You don't have to have a baby. True, and there is a large, large part of me right now that feels like, you know, this isn't the best timing. It's not really going to be easy for It's someone involved. you're not going to be with. It's somebody who... Three years late has decided to start college for reasons I don't understand. Well, I guess he was in college, and now he's gone to a different college. He transferred over. How many years of college has he taken? Um, well, I guess he went straight from, from high school to community college, and now he's at a, a state college. Yeah, but he's 21. Most people are graduated with their basic degree at 21. Yeah. I don't know. Well, he's he's. I know he's going to school for some, like, bigger stuff that's going to take a little more schooling than the average person, like engineer type stuff. So, doctorate and whatnot, or PhD or whatever. And you um, want to even consider the possibility of screwing this up for him? No, I mean that's just it. He's got a huge future ahead of him, and I don't want to screw it up for him. And I realize he's not ready, but he's also, you know, I've felt like if I do, if I can do this on my own, I might just let him off the hook, you know? And well, well, what, guess what? Do you, were you going to tell him what you're doing? Oh, well, we've already talked about it. He's already completely aware. And I told him that I'm leaning toward not going through with it for all of the logical reasons why. What but does he want? He doesn't want me to have it at all. Yeah, well. At all. That's how I would feel. Yeah. And um, I'm not. I don't know. I'm just really not sure. I'm Wouldn't it make more sense to have a baby with a father? Yeah, that's how I want it to be. But wouldn't it be more make more sense to do it that way? Yeah, that's how I want it to be. Well, why don't and you make it be that way? Wait, wait, wait. Why don't you make it be that way? I know. Well, I guess the only way to make it be that way is to not have this. Correct. Now and to that's wait for right. a better time. That's right. Dear, you're not 38. You're 28. Yeah. What's the rush? There's no rush. There's no rush. Are you enjoying your life? Yes. Don't you think this would change your life forever? Oh, yes. Very, and and very couldn't you wait another five or ten years to change your life forever? That's kind of what I was planning for. That's why I was being so careful. <laughs> no, but now that, now that the birth control didn't work, you have control over what happens next. Yeah. So why don't you do that? 
it, you know what? It's my brain tells me one thing, and then my emotions and my feelings. And Don't let your emotions and your feelings run. People who let their emotions and their feelings run their lives, run their lives into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You have to let your mind take care of these things. Yeah. And a child deserves to have a father, a willing participant. Yes, and he, he wouldn't leave me hanging on this. If I did go through with it, he would claim it, but he would not be happy about it. Well, you you want that? No, not at all. Well, then you know what you have to do. It's just very hard. I feel a lot of remorse and guilt. Why? Because it's a beautiful, natural thing, and babies aren't tragedies. They're blessings. Well, they are tragedies if they're born into the wrong situations. Babies born into abusive homes are tragedies. Babies born into uh, p p p homes of p poverty or homeless people are tragedies. There, mm -hmm. are, there are many tragedies that are birthed here. Yeah. You are with someone who, who is young and does not want to have a baby. Yeah. If you do, that you might consider the possibility of having a baby in case of an accident. You should not have been having sex with somebody like this. Yeah, well, we figured we had all our bases covered. <laughs> I know, but, baby, but I, I just got to tell you this. Well, apparently, check this out. You're going to trip on on this. So it's not really either one of our faults that this happened because about... I, I understand. Two months, two months ago, this was right before I... Three months ago, actually, before I started... Um, sleeping with him, I had gone to get a checkup at the doctor's office, just a normal thing, and there was a doctor that I don't normally see, but he came in, he noticed that I was a smoker, and suggested uh, very much so that I change my birth control pill because I'm reaching the age of 30 and all these risks and blah, blah, blah. So he changed me over to this other birth control pill and instructed me that, you know, it was a little bit of a lower dosage, so I had to be on the ball and take it every day at the same time. So I was really, really, really just strict about that and very disciplined at taking it every day. At the same I time. understand that you work so very I hard. Go the, I go to the doctor a couple, this week, a couple days ago, find out that the stuff that he prescribed to me isn't even meant for me. It's meant for a woman that is breastfeeding. So, so you also have malpractice suit on your hands, I imagine. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm thinking about doing, too, because this wouldn't have happened if he hadn't have screwed that up. Well, you do understand that even if you want a malpractice suit, no malpractice suit pays child support. Yeah, true. So forget no. about that. <laughs> no, it would be more for him putting me in this situation and kind of deal with just all of this, you know. Right. I wouldn't be here. if the, nor the other birth control that I was on was working fine for the past however many years I've been on it. Well, there you have no reason to feel guilt. You did everything that you were supposed to do. You didn't get drunk and go without protection. You did what you were told. You followed the bouncing ball. Uh -huh. There's no reason to feel guilty. Okay. You need to do what's good for you. And, and by the way, uh -huh. you don't want a child born with a father who doesn't want it. What part sucks? Having a child born with a father that doesn't want it. Well. That's really sad. Dear, you, look, let's face it. You were having a good time being with a guy who was younger. <laughs> well, this is one of the possible outcomes when you do that. Yeah. Okay, and if you made any mistake at all, it would be that. Are you not, in other words, I always tell people to do gut checks. Uh -huh. You need to sit down. If you're look, if you're gonna have sex with a guy who's twenty one years old and you're twenty eight years old, you need to say to yourself, What would happen if I got pregnant? Yeah. What would I do? And and the reality is not a lot of twenty one year old guys go into school who want to have babies. Yeah. So you have to right the wrong. Mm -hmm. And you have to take care of it now, and then next time uh, be a little more discriminating if your plan is ultimately to have babies. I also recommend next time when you have a partner, especially somebody who's not a one-night stand, that you discuss with him 
what you would do the next time this happens if you think this is what you would do. So they have the option of opting out in the first place. Okay. I mean, I tell women right up front, no interest. Okay. And that way they can say, I don't want to see you anymore. Yeah, and see, he wasn't saying that to me. He was saying, oh, I do want kids and I want to start. But he didn't you know, say he wants them at 21. No, no, he didn't say that. See, don't don't he twist his words. He, no, no, he no, wants no, no, kids no, when he's when friends. he's finished with school, yeah. when he has a job, when he has that's his career going, mm-hmm. when he's older. Yeah, that's that's what I gathered, too. But I also gathered that he, you know, was so excited about it that he might not be completely opposed to this. Happening. No, but you assumed that and you were wrong. I guess I was hoping that he might not be but, completely. But that's, that's my point. You see, you have to have a very upfront conversation with people. If you're if you're not sure what you would do or if you think it's likely you would have a baby for your own good. And for the good of any children you might create, you need to tell the person you're with, you know, by the way, there's somebody I know, and she knows who she is, who I dated within the past couple of years, Mm -hmm. who had told me at one point that she had decided she was 35 or whatever, and she did not want to have kids. Okay. Okay. Later, one time, when she was with me, she told me she changed her mind that, you know, she didn't need me to be involved, but if she got pregnant, she was not going to give that up. Okay. I stopped seeing her. Okay. But not only did I stop seeing her, I saluted her on the air. I said, thank God she was, like, up okay. front and honest about that. Uh-huh. And we had an honest conversation about it. Uh-huh. And I told her in response, I said, well, then we shouldn't be doing this. Uh-huh. Because I don't. Even if you walk away, I don't want to know there's a little time bomb out there. I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I sent her off. Yeah. I stopped seeing her. Uh Uh-huh. She knows who she is. But you see, she gave me the chance to opt out by telling me honestly, not implying that maybe she'd like to have a baby in five years. Mm -hmm. She told me that if this condom doesn't work, I'm not using anything and I am not going to have an abortion. She told me. Now, I don't agree with her position, but I agree with being honest. And she was honest. And therefore, I'm like, thank you. Thank you for telling me that now. And you know what? It's funny. (laughs) We actually did have a conversation about this, but it was already too late. I was pregnant and didn't know it. Because last month, the birth control pill gave me a false period. He's 21 years old, dear. You're expecting a lot. And you know what I tell people who are 21 years old about having relationships or Mm. commitments or responsibilities? Mm. Never count on someone 21 years old to be a responsible, mature adult. (laughs) Point taken. (laughs) All right. Yeah. All right. Look, I know this is not an easy decision to make, but, you know, you got your life ahead of you. And when you have a baby, you want to have a baby with somebody who wants to be there to do it with you. Yeah, that's important to me. And it's important to the kid. Yeah. I guess I just needed to talk to somebody who wasn't involved. Who had I understand. Who had unbiased opinion. I understand. You know? And your day will come when you're going to be with somebody who wants to do that. And when that day comes, do it. But not now. Not with him. Yeah. And stop with this idea, well, I can afford to do it on my own. You look around you and see the results of 35 years of women saying, oh, I don't need a father. Look around at the kind of pussy guys that are out there. Yeah, you know, I know what it's like. My my mother was a single mom for quite a few years, too, and it's not easy. It's not good for boys, especially. Yeah. It's just not. What yeah. if you had a boy with no father? Yeah. You don't want to do that. No. No sonograms. Do what you have to do and then have a baby when you're with somebody who wants to do it, okay? Okay, thank you so much. All right, Marie. Good luck. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.